Alec Pierce Tech Tips, here we go. Now this is a very useful tech tip for almost all divers. Now that's assuming, of course, that you do any service, any work on your regulators on your own. What I want to show you here is something that your dive store will do for you. And it might be a modest labor charge, a really good LDS local dive store. And particularly if you've been sucking up to the, uh, to the service manager, in other words, being a nice customer and so on, uh, they will do this for nothing. They get in on a slow day and tell them, I want to get new hoses, I want you to change the hoses. So they won't charge you for it, nine times out of ten. But anyway, let me show you how to change the hoses on your regulator. It's really very simple. If you're handy, uh, this is not going to be a big deal. But let's do it anyway. You need a bunch of wrenches. You need a half, half inch, nine sixteenths, five eighths, eleven and three. That's what they're called. <laughs> half, nine, five, eleven and three. Half inch, five eighths, uh, sorry, nine sixteenths, five eighths, eleven sixteenths and three quarters. That's what you need. You can take the, all, all the hoses, all, everything apart very easily. So what do you do? Well, the first thing you have to do, the hardest part, quite frankly, is getting these darn hose protectors pulled off so that the nuts on the first stage, can you see in there, Kevin? So they're exposed. And these hose protectors on rubber hoses, which are necessary on rubber hoses, are a real nuisance. If yours are impossible to pull back the way I just did, put the dust cap on the first stage and soak it in hot, soapy water for five minutes. Hot, soapy water. That softens up these. Now grab these with a cloth, a, a glove or a wrap of cloth around and twist and pull them off and they should pull off, okay? If worse comes to worse, do the old motorcycle biker trick. Yeah, get some compressed air, nozzle, and blow under the edge of the hose protector. I've never shown you that, have I, Kevin? Oh, that's easy. You blow under there and this thing just slides right on. Anyway, that's an old biker trick for getting handlebars off of motorcycles. Anyway, that's the hardest part. So now you've got your four hoses. I'm assuming you have four hoses. Some may only have three. Uh, some may have five. But anyway, typically four hoses. Now you can see all of the nuts for where they screw into the regulator. Now, uh, a couple of ways you can do this. You can do one at a time. It's probably the smartest thing to do, one at a time. Take a hose off, replace it, put it back on, and round you go. Uh, if you decide you want to take them all off at once, fine. Can I make a suggestion that you take a picture of the regulator before you do that? So you put them all back in the same way. You want to make sure you get them in the right order. Primary, safe second, LP for the BC, inflator hose, and the SPG. Now the SPG is easy because on an SPG it's the only hose that will fit into that hole. That one you can't really screw up too badly. But anyway, that's up to you. Point is keep track of them. Now what do you do? Well, you take them off. Most of these uh, nuts on, on the first stage are a half inch or nine sixteenths. A lot of them might be, you might find some five eighths in there. So those are the three wrenches you need. And you literally just put the wrench on the nuts like that and go like that. And make sure, of course, that you're turning the nut counterclockwise from the end. If you're looking at the hose like this, you turn counterclockwise to take them off. And off they come like that. So all four of your hoses are now loose. Now you take them off. So I'm not going to do both second stages. That's silly. They're both exactly the same. So now you undo the hose from the first stage. So now we take that second stage hose out just like this. You see, it's really quite easy. And the only thing comes out, there's only five or six threads on there, and you take the hose out like so. Now, as soon as you do that, if you're going to replace it right away, great. If you're going to wait for a while, then do something to protect that port. Put a piece of masking tape over it, or at least put a cloth over the first stage, just to keep any dust, bird droppings, anything out. But uh, take a little look and make sure that that's clean around the port. No problem. Now, what you also can do, <clears throat> And once you've done this, if the case is any dirt has fallen in there from your finger, just turn the tank on a little bit. Air blasts out. My hair in place. It's not hard. Uh, air blasts out and cleans any dirt out. So now you have the uh, second stage uh, in your hand with the hose. Great. You want to replace the hose. Now, if you look at this end, that is uh, where the hose joins the actual second stage going in your mouth, this is a little more complicated. What the heck's going on here? There's two nuts here. Sometimes there's three. Sometimes there's a swivel. You have to figure that out on your own. This is a typical arrangement. By typical, what I mean is this large wrench, three quarters, will fit onto that nut, which is close to the plastic body, and you have to hold it. And then 11 sixteenths will fit onto this nut. Now, if you put these wrenches in exactly the right position, you see the way I've got them here? Now all you have to do is, like a pair of scissors, squeeze them together. And what you've done is you've turned this outer nut off, like that. And that's the nut that's attached to the hose. Okay, and now the hose comes off. 
one off. This is important. Don't try to take that off on its own without holding this nut. Because if you do, what happens is you turn the whole assembly and you screw up the adjustment of the second stage. I'm assuming your regulator was working properly before. You just want to change the hoses. You don't want to mess up the regulator. So make sure you hold that nut. And the second reason why you must do that is many of these regulators, this nut is part of the plastic body. It's molded right into the plastic body. So if you undo this nut without holding that, you run the risk of twisting this nut and breaking the plastic body. So make sure you have that wrench on that nut and then the second wrench on the hose itself. And then turn off the hose. Hold this one and turn off the hose. You follow that? I hope that was reasonably clear. So now you have the hose looks just like this. So pick up your new hose. Well, now we're going to put on flex hoses. Ah, oh, yeah. Flex hoses are exactly the same as rubber hoses as far as fittings and putting them on and off. The only difference is, of course, we've talked about this before. Go back in my tech tips and you see we have lots and lots of videos about flex hoses and how they're very flexible. You can tie a bowline and a double sheep shank in this hose. I'm not sure what that is, but anyway. You see, you can't do that with a rubber hose. They're extremely flexible. Now, another nice benefit of flex hoses is that you don't have to have hose protectors on flex hoses if you don't want them. So if you don't want that hose protector on the end, just leave it off. You don't really need it. Flex hoses are so flexible that they don't get the sharp bend there at the metal ferrule and cut through. So you really don't need to have hose protectors on flex hoses. Okay, so what do you do? This is your hose for your second stage. This is actually an octopus, but it's the same hose, same fittings. Well, it's simple. Make sure that the end is clean. Make sure these threads are clean. This is probably a good time to take a toothbrush and just quickly clean those threads off. No lubrication required because there's an O-ring in there. And the O-ring is naturally lubricated. That fits into that like so. This screws together like so. <clears throat> and now you all you have to do is tighten it back up. Once again, don't try to do it without holding the large nut. Hold the large nut and then using that next wrench, if Kevin left it in my thing there, same type of thing. Just squeeze gently, just like that. That's all there is to it. You don't want too much. Just enough. Good, good. Some of you young guys, you got strong hands. Don't go crazy on these. Now, again, on the first stage, you don't need to lubricate the threads. This is an O-ring seal. You don't need to lubricate them, and you don't need to make it too tight. This is clean. The threads are brand new and clean. The O-ring is new and shiny. Put it into the port. That's what that's called, that threaded hole. It's called a port, like an airport. But I guess it's like a, it's a hose port. Would that be right, Kevin? Hose port, whatever. Now put your wrench on there. Now how tight should you make it? You say, well, how tight should I make it? My hoses are loose. Well, they shouldn't be loose. You don't, you don't want the fall out. At the same time, that fitting that you're going to tighten in is made of stainless steel. The body of the regulator is made of brass. Now, if you know nothing about metal, let me give you a little lesson. Brass is soft. Stainless steel is hard. If you pull too hard on it, ugh, put a lot of weight behind it, you'll simply strip the threads in the brass body of the regulator. My regulators are cheap. What do you care? You see my point? It's backwards. The hose, if anything's going to break, should break because it's cheap to replace point is, don't do it too tightly, just up to the O-ring, that's where it stops, and maybe a sixteenth to an eighth of a turn more, that's it. When it gets a little bit hard to turn, stop, stop turning. So that's the way the second stage hoses are changed, it's just that easy. The LP hose, that's your low pressure hose for your BC, is exactly the same. Simply take the wrench, unscrew it, take it off, and put the new one back in. I don't need to show you that. There's nothing to be done at this end. Again, back in my earlier tech tips, I did show you how to lubricate, clean, and replace the Schrader valve that's inside this end of the LP inflator. So that leaves us just with the high pressure hose. Now this is a little bit different. The high pressure hose is a little different than these other two hoses. Let me show you what happens here. First of all, again, hose protectors come off. You put the wrench on there, loosen the nut carefully, and then unthread the hose. Just really that simple. Now, once you do that, you can check and see if I'm right. You should always check to see if I'm right. Sometimes I'm not right. I'm never wrong, but I'm not always right. <laughs> anyway, check and see. Again, make sure that that hole is clean. There's no dirt going in there. And then look at this end of the hose, and you'll be able to see several things. You'll see that this thread is bigger. That port is bigger. And that's specifically so you can't put a low-pressure hose into the high-pressure port. You don't want to do that. If you did that, you have a low-pressure hose with a burst, uh, uh, burst 
pressure of 250 psi into a high pressure port with a pressure of 3000 psi, it's going to be very noisy in the basement when you turn the tank on. Boom! Your wife will come running downstairs and you're going to be in trouble. So don't do, you can't do that. So you can see that difference. As well, you'll notice that the end of the hose is very, very, very small as opposed to a low pressure hose. And get that low pressure hose back here and you'll see that the hole in the end of the low pressure hose is very big. You see that? You can barely see the hole. Again, go back in my tip tips and you'll, you'll learn why. There's a reason for that. Anyway, it's interesting to look at those things just to be sure that uh, I am right. Okay, now you got to go to the console end. And this really is the, is the, careful, the job you have to be careful of at the console end. If you have an SPG and it's mounting a console like this, these can be really, really tough to get out. If you have a rubbery, rubber, rubber console, it's rubber. You can usually tell, you can grab it, twist it, then it's not quite so bad. Soak this in warm, soapy water. And then you should be able to bend the console. See, you can bend it. And once you bend it, then you can push that pressure gauge out. Push it out with the hose until the pressure gauge pops out. Like that. Okay, got it there. Now, be very, very careful. A lot of, uh, of modern uh, SPG console boots like this are made of plastic. You can usually tell. Very hard to bend, if at all. And they're usually shiny, not dull like this. They're very hard to get the gauge out of the plastic ones. Yeah, very hard without breaking it. Be very, very careful. Soak in hot water for quite a while and just be really careful. Anyway, once you've got that out of there, then this is similar to the second stage. You need to have a wrench that fits on. You notice that this end swivels. You see that, Kevin? It swivels. Maybe just zoom in there a little wee bit. Can you see that? Okay, and you notice that there's a nut here, flats, and there's another nut up there. So this wrench fits that nut, and this wrench fits that nut. So we have two nuts and two wrenches. It's the same thing. If you squeeze them together and turn them the right way again, the hose goes counterclockwise. What happens now is the, th the head will come off the hose like that. One nut stays on the head, and one nut is actually the swivel. Let me show you there again. Can you still see that? There's a swivel on the SPG, and the other nut is on the actual gauge itself. All right. Now again, don't try to take this off without holding that, or otherwise you'll break the plastic case of the gauge. So there's your hose. Take the hose off and pull it out of the console and take it out of there. Now you'll notice something else. There's a funny little device in here. It's called a swivel pin. Like that. That comes out of the end. A little swivel pin. That's exactly what it's called. It's a little pin with a tiny, tiny hole through it, really small, and two tiny, tiny O-rings. See that? And you know something else about it? It's dirty. Hey, look at my finger from pulling it out. Now, these get very, very dirty because they're exposed to salt, water, fresh water, dirty water, wherever it is, exposed all the time. Throw it away. Spend $3 and get a new swivel pin for your SPG. Using a, a Q-tip, put it down inside that hole, clean it out carefully. When you pull it out, the Q-tip will be dirty. Take it out. A little bit of silicone grease on that Q-tip wouldn't hurt. A little bit of silicone grease on these threads wouldn't hurt either. These are not O-ring sealed. Okay, the O-ring seal for the SPG are these two O-rings on the swivel pin. Get your new swivel pin, nice and shiny, new O-rings. A little bit of silicone grease, slide it into the head, and then slide, get rid of that, slide <clears throat> that new swivel pin and your old head onto the new SPG hose. Here's a new SPG hose with the swivel nut. Slide it in like so. Screw it down till it's finger tight. And then once again, using your two wrenches, make them snug. Now these two, there's no O-ring seal. The two nuts just come together and seal. And you can put a good, good bit of pressure on there. Again, don't force it. Don't be jumping up and down on it. But do it nice and tight so those two nuts are tight together. Really that simple. Put the back into your console, right? And then thread it back into the high pressure hole. And the same as with the uh, 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 second stage hose, the low pressure hose. Screw it down hand tight as far as you can, and then with the wrench, carefully, about another sixteenth to an eighth of a turn until it stops turning with not too much force. You're done. Just that easy. Now, there are four of them. I've only done two for you, but the process is exactly the same. If you have any, and now, you may find that some are a little bit different. They don't always have nuts. Sometimes they have knurled sections. Be very, very careful grabbing them. You don't mark them up. Anyway, some of you asked about changing hoses. That's how you do it. Rubber. Flex, long, short, doesn't matter. The fittings are 90% the same as what I've just shown you. Hey, 
I hope there's something in there that's been helpful to you guys. I'll talk to you real soon. Alec Pierce from Tech Tips.